Hello, my name is Yu Xiangzhang. I'm a PhD student from University College Dublin. Today, I'm presenting a numerical study of the effect of wind barriers on traffic and the bridge deck. There will be three sections covered in this presentation. I will firstly give some background information of both the windshielding and CFD in the introduction section. Then I'll present you the simulations I've performed. In the end, a few thoughts will be shared for the future research. Without further ado, let's begin. The crosswind effect on vehicles can bring critical safety issues such as side slip and overturning. Here are some examples. Figure 1 shows a double-decker blown off the road in the UK last year. Figure 2 shows a truck overturned due to a gust wind of 150k in America. Figure 3 shows an overturned truck on the new Tacoma Narrows Bridge. So bridges in areas of complex wind environment usually have windshield structures to shelter vehicles from the wind. Figure 4 is the uh, wind barrier installed on the 7 bridge in England. Figure 5 is the wind barrier installed on the Queen's Ferry Bridge in Scotland. Figure 6 is the wind shelter of the Sudan Bridge in China. In the design of these windshielding structures, wind tunnel tests are normally performed. And these tests are adopted by the industry for a very long time. So engineers trust the results. Indeed, for low velocity and laminar cases, the accuracy is uh, acceptable. But remember, you're testing a skewed model. In bridge wind tunnel tests, the scale typically ranges from 1 over 50 to 1 over 200. And this is limited by the size of the testing facility. Figure 7 shows the AMES wind tunnel of NASA. It has a uh, testing section of 25 meters by 35 meters. But bridge designers normally cannot afford such a huge facility. In reality, we end up using something much smaller, like the one in figure 8, which has a cross-section of 2 meter by 2 meter only. The price of performing such tests is very high. What's worse is that you need to repeat the test when the design is updated. And for very large bridges under extreme wind conditions, you cannot even fully trust the results due to the inconsistencies in Reynolds number. Tra treating boundary layer in these tests are challenging, and the instrument might also interfere with the flow field. If you look at figure 9, that is a uh, hot wire probe for velocity measurement. These sensors look really chunky on such a small bridge model. In this study, we're not going to perform any wind tunnel test. Instead, we're doing CFD simulations, in which CFD stands for Computational Fluid Dynamics. It is essentially a branch of fluid mechanics that studies uh, mainly three types of problems. Firstly, the steady state problems, in which time averaged results are derived and studied. For example, uh, figure 10 shows the average velocity field plotted around a bridge deck model, and the simulation of model present is also steady state. Uh, the second one is transient problems. These are normally related to uh, large flow separations and vortex shedding effects. And figure 11 is just an example of the famous von Kahn vortex strait. And the third category is that safety can also be used to study FSI problems, in which motion structures are coupled with the fluid flow. Figure 12 shows an uh, elastic beam subject to uniform fluid flow. What distinguishes CFD from generalized fluid mechanics is that it utilizes computational power of modern computers. For instance, in CFD simulations, we normally use parallel computing on cluster server instead of running in serial. And there have been some attempts to incorporate machine learning into the fluid modeling. And let's move on to the simulations I have performed. Three pieces of software are used in this study. Firstly, AutoCAD is used to generate geometries, and then the geometries are matched in OpenFone, which is an open-sourced C++ library based on a finite volume method. It does not have a graphic user interface, so all settings of boundary conditions and solvers are configured in command lines, which is actually more efficient. Another open-source software used here is uh, Paraview, which helps visualize the field data from uh, uh, OpenFone. As the goal of this study is to compare the effect of different windshield walls, geometries of vehicles and bridge decks are simplified into versions in uh, figure 13 and figure 14. There are four types of windshield walls used in the study, listed in the table. Uh, three of them are non-perforated walls of different heights, which means no air can pass through, and there's also a perforated windshield wall. The meshing step begins with defining a 
testing domain and generating the background mesh using the utility called block mesh in open phone. The domain has a dimension of 65 meter by 70 meter by 50 meter, which is impossible to realize in a wind tunnel. Each cell within the domain is a cube with a width of one meter. Then the internal mesh is refined using the snappy hex mesh utility in open form. The final cell count is around an eight million. With this level of grade density, all details of the bridge, vehicles, and the walls are resolved. The domain has four surfaces of patches, which will stop air flowing through. And these wall type patches are painted blue in figure 18. The red surface is the inlet patch where airflow initiates. The surface opposite to the inlet patch is the outlet patch, which only permits the air inside to discharge. It is important to manually initialize boundary conditions at different patches. Uh, the wind velocity is selected to be the speed of a gale wind at 70 meter per second, and the value is fixed at inlet and outlet patch. For wall patch, velocity is interpolated using no slip wall function building in open form. As we assume the air is incompressible, the pressure takes the form of a kinematic pressure, which is the dynamic pressure divided by density. Also, we ignore the atmosphere here. And also, uh, the zero gradient means the value is constant, but we don't need to specify uh, a value since the solver will calculate it from the velocity field. The key epsilon turbulence model is utilized in this uh, simulation. And the turbulence kinematic uh, energy K is initialized using uh, that, that equation. And the energy uh, dissipation rate is also uh, initialized using the equation. The turbulence viscosity is calculated from K and epsilon. For wall patches, all of these values are de derived using wall functions. Uh, it should be noted that these values are only initial values and will be updated once the solver starts to run. In the study, the solver called SimpleForm is used. It is based on the simple algorithm and offers uh, RAN simulations. As mentioned, the simulation is state to state and the key epsilon turbulence model is used to close the RAN formulation. Because we're dealing with millions of cells, the simulation is ran in parallel with 64 CPU cores on UCD Sonic cluster server. And these simulations normally converge around uh, 30 minutes. There are three utilities used in the post-processing. The first one is say, the slice utility, which is used to select a cross-section to study. The second one, uh, the plot over line utility, is applied to sample data from the, uh, from the field. There are two sampling lines. One is one meter above the roll surface. The other is two meter above the roll surface representing the flow conditions at the top of the vehicle. And third is uh, the glyph utility, which is used to illustrate the direction of fluid flow. Figures 22 to 26 show the uh, wind velocity at the selected cross-section of five models with different windshield strategies. It is very clear that the existence of the windshield walls can significantly reduce the wind velocity around the vehicles. Figure 27 to 30 show the wind velocity and wind pressure at the two sampling lines of five simulations with different uh, wind shields. The positions of vehicle models are indicated in these figures. As the wall gets higher, the wind velocity at the location around the vehicle tends to get lower. When the height of the wall continues to increase, the absolute value of the negative wind velocity becomes higher. It can be found that the perforated walls have a uh, a lower absolute value of the wind, loss, uh, wind velocity than that of the uh, non-perforated wall of the same height. According to figure 29 and 30, the model with a four meter perforated wall generally has a lower absolute value of the wind pressure than four meter non-perforated wall. Another comparison has been made between the non shield model and the four meter perforated model. These two simulations are carried out with a velocity of 40, uh, 45 meters per second, which is an extreme wind velocity of the year 2019 reported by Matt Aring. Figure uh, 31 and 32 show the uh, selected cross-section. The wind velocity at two assembly locations is presented in figure 32, uh, 33 and 34. The blue line stands for the case without wind shooting. 
the arch for the case with the shielding. It is quite obvious that the windshield can significantly reduce the wind velocity around the vehicle. And if you look at figure 34, the wind velocity of the shielded model at the location above the top of the vehicle is over two, uh, over 20 meter per second lower than that in the non-shielded model. This is comparison. This comparison just demonstrates the necessity of having wind shielding structures on the bridge, especially when extreme weather conditions often occurs in Ireland. Windshield walls can significantly reduce the wind velocity around the vehicle. That's obviously the first conclusion we have drawn from the simulations. And the second one is the non-perforated windshield wall also stimulates eddies, which might cause uh, vortex-related problems. And also, the perforated wall causes relatively smaller eddy-related issues than the non-perforated wall with the same height. Uh, remember, this study just shows a very little piece of what safety can do in this area. And more relevant parameters will be compared in future research, for example, force, moments, and flooded derivatives or other parameters. A project using safety to extract aerodynamic forces of a bridge deck section model is currently ongoing. And that is basically all of my presentation. Thank you for listening. And I'll be very happy to answer any questions. Thank you.